Okay, this is <clears throat> this is uh, microbiology lecture seven, part three. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, viral. Inf we're continuing talking about viruses and uh, uh, in viral infections, not all viral infections, but some viral infections uh, are acute. Uh, they are characterized by a very rapid onset, uh, a brief period of symptoms, and they typically resolve in a few days, uh, and uh, the person recovers, and uh, um, all being well, the person recovers, and their immune uh, system has uh, defended them, and they are uh, immune after that. Uh, that doesn't always occur. There are uh, certainly examples of acute viral infections, um, which in some cases uh, end by death of the person uh, who, who had the infection. Um, <clears throat> and this diagram shows the kind of progress that can occur in a acute viral infection where person is infected with a certain number and that can uh, really have a big determining factor on how quickly and progressively the disease advances. Um, so initially they're infected and you get uh, exponential and this is an, a logarithmic or ex exponential uh, scale. You get a logarithmic increase, uh, acute infection and uh, the person either dies or recovers um, and uh, goes back to being normal and healthy. There are two other important types of non-acute, much longer term types of viral infections. And this is something that's uh, fairly unique to viruses in that you can have latent viral infections, which are in, in essentially hidden from view. They lie hidden, um, and do not appear until months or even years later, do not reappear until months or years later, and it can be a recurrent reappearance. And another type are persistent viral infections, and I'll describe those two types. So the two other types of uh, <clears throat> latent viral, uh, of sorry, non-acute viral infections are latent viral infections and persistent vi viral infections. And there's quite an important distinction between the two. In latent viral infection, there is the initial infection and there are virions or infectious vir virus particles, but then they disappear. However, the viral genome is still present and could can be detected in uh, cells. This is a kind of a lysogenic cycle, which we uh, learned about earlier. There are no infectious virions, but the genome is there and the virus genome remains in the asymptomatic host and uh, it can stay there for very long periods of time. Um, however, it can sporadically and multiple times recurrently appear as an active infection at some later time point. So typically what happens is that people um, uh, get fatigued or stressed or um, their health uh, deteriorates, their immune system uh, is reduced in its uh, effectiveness because of age or for some other reason, and you get a reemergence from the uh, of the viral genome and, and formation of infectious vir virions, uh, virus particles, and you get symptoms and disease process. The uh, members, viruses that are members of the herpes viridae, the herpes viridae family, um, can typically uh, cause latent viral infections. They uh, all remain, uh, at least the genome remains in host cells, infected host cells for the lifetime of the person. Examples of this are um, uh, herpes uh, simplex virus one and herpes simplex virus two both of which cause cold sores. They're also known as HHV1 and, and HHV2. We spoke about that earlier. They are uh, members of the human herpes viruses. Uh, 
and um, uh, remain uh, dormant in uh, in uh, neural tissue and can occasionally and recurrently uh, reemerge and cause uh, damage to tissue disease uh, cause disease tissue the other is uh, chickenpox virus which goes by a number of different names including varicella virus varicella uh, zoster this is a uh, hhv5 i believe uh, human herpes virus 5 it causes the disease chickenpox typically in kids um, not uh, not normally a uh, fatal disease but can be uh, can be quite severe um, however it remains once the uh, symptoms have resolved and the infectious virus particles are gone it remains dormant within um, uh, sensory neurons uh, and can reemerge with the same kind of things I talked about earlier uh, fatigue um, immunosuppression, uh, poor nutrition, etc., and uh, can reemerge uh, to cause shingles, which is uh, quite a severe uh, damage to tissue um, due to reemergence of the virus from the uh, sensory neurons. So these are latent virus infections. They completely disappear. The person is asymptomatic after an initial uh, infectious bout with it. Their person is completely asymptomatic and you cannot find uh, virus particles, but the viral genome stays there and then later reemerges in the person and causes uh, disease uh, uh, or damaged tissue. The other type of uh, non acute viral infection is a persistent viral infection. In this case, um, what you have is uh, that the disease. Uh, progresses very slowly. It is present. The vir virions, the infectious virus particles, are always present. There, it occurs over a very long period of time, and progresses until. And generally, it's uh, these are fatal diseases. Examples of this would be uh, measles virus, which can cause the uh, persistent uh, disease or persistent viral infection, resulting in uh, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, and uh, the human uh, immunodeficiency virus, which can cause acquired uh, immunodeficiency syndrome, um, both of which are fatal diseases. Okay, this is a diagram which shows, and again, it's you have to remember that any diagram where they're look they're showing uh, numbers uh, or uh, illustrating uh, increasing change in numbers of uh, infectious virus particles or virions, it's going to be a logarithmic or exponential scale, um, not a linear scale. Here you see an initial infection resulting in acute infection, which we looked at before, and that can resolve or it could sometimes uh, continue in, in as a persistent infection. And this is something that does happen with HIV, an initial acute infection where you find virus and then a persistent um, I'm sorry yeah a persistent infection where the viral count slowly gradually over months and years increases until it reemerges uh, severely later on latent infections completely disappear and you can't find any virus particles and then will reoccur and you can have uh, people can have several bouts of uh, latent infection uh, you know, once or twice a year even. Okay, here are some examples of latent and persistent viral infections that you should know about, one of which I, some of which I mentioned. The uh, disease process of cold sores caused by uh, human herpes virus 1 and human herpes virus 2, also known as, um, I'll write this out for you, also known as HSV1 or human, uh, is it human or herpes simplex virus? I'm sorry, not human, herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. The more uh, up to date name would be uh, HS, uh, would be HHV1 and HHV2. Okay, so human. 
herpes simplex virus 1. Uh, another disease process, it, it's, it, it is a, a fairly rare uh, form of leukemia, but it is caused by uh, some types of leukemia can be caused by a virus, and the virus is uh, HTLV1 and also HTLV2. I didn't mention that earlier. And then shingles caused by the varicella virus or um, uh, also the called the zoster virus, also cause, called uh, human herpes virus, HHV5. Uh, I hope I'm right on that. I think it is five. Persistent infections in which you have long-term infection and persistent uh, presence of the uh, viruses uh, include uh, cervical cancer caused by the human papillomavirus. There are several uh, substrains or type, subtypes of uh, HPV, human papillomavirus, and some are uh, some of them are closely associated with development over long term of uh, cancer of the cervix or cervical cancer. This alone is a obvious reason to be vaccinated against. HPV or human papillomavirus. There are very effective vaccines available uh, uh, for uh, uh, HPV and they prevent cases of cervical cancer uh, occurring after many years of infection. Um, another type of, and I mentioned, I believe, did I mention earlier, uh, Oh no, I mentioned um, uh, measles and HIV. Okay, then there, another disease, persistent viral infection causing uh, diseases, uh, uh, the disease is AIDS uh, and the virus, there are two types, HIV-1 and there's uh, some sort of typo here, HIV-2, okay. They're both uh, classed under lentiviruses, that's an L. The brackets are in the wrong place. Um, hepatitis B virus can cause uh, over long-term liver cancer. Let's skip these. I don't necessarily. It is an important point about liver cancer co being caused by hepatitis B. Uh, measles virus can cause uh, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. All persistent kinds of uh, persistent viral infections and these are latent. So here the virus disappears because it remains dormant inside the genome of an infected cell, of infected cells. And here the virus, after an initial uh, early increase, uh, drops down in number and then uh, remains present for a long, long period of time, gradually uh, developing into the disease gradually causing the, the pathogenic process, always present and slowly increasing in number. Okay, so let's move on to a quite different kind of uh, infectious agent. It's, uh, it can't be called a life form because it, 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 it does not uh, actually contain any um, nucleic acid coding for itself. These are uh, what are called prions. Prions are infectious proteins. Prion itself, the term prion uh, is an abbreviation of proteinaceous infectious particles. These are, these are a type of protein which can cause a disease that is transmissible. So it can be transmitted uh, from one individual to another, from one animal to another. It causes spongiform encephalopathy. So it is, the, all these diseases are transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. Transmissible in that it can be uh, carried from or transmitted from one person to the next. One person can infect the next. One animal can infect another animal. One animal can infect a human. 
causes a sponge-like change in the uh, central nervous system tissue. So it causes encephalopathy and the encephalopathy is our holes. Eventually you get holes, hole, uh, sponge-like holes in the nerve tissue, abbreviated TSE. So a progressive neurological disease that destroys the brain and spinal cord tissue of the central nervous system. This was initially identified uh, as a problem and a disease in humans, which was called variant Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease, and it or VCJD, and it turned out that it was due to eating um, uh, beef con from contaminated cows or from contaminated beef cattle. Uh, who had bovine spongiform encephalopathy, BSE. This is also called mad cow disease. So the cows had mad cow disease, a prion mediated disease, and were uh, butchered and the meat sold uh, to people. And some of those people came down with variant Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease, also a type of transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. So they were, they were uh, inf infected or they, the disease was transmitted to them uh, from the disease tissue of uh, cattle that had it. That's no good. So they got this type of transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. In the cattle, it's called BSE, and in humans, it's called variant Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease, VCJD. VCJD got its name because there is a disease, a prion mediated disease in humans called CJD or Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease. CJD is fine. CJD is a uh, uh, spongiform encephalopathy that occurs over a very, very long period of time. But uh, the people who got uh, VCJD, many of them were fairly young. And it turned out that they got it because they had consumed uh, contaminated beef from animals that had BSE. Well, it turned out that uh, the animals, the cows, actually had eaten uh, contaminated uh, feed that was enriched for protein by using slaughterhouse remains from sheep that had a type of transmissible a TSE, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. So the cattle got it from contaminated feed that had uh, contaminated uh, sheep uh, internal organs used to make uh, high protein feed. And humans caught it from the, uh, the cows that had BSE. So it's transmissible by ingestion of infected tissue. Cows got it from sheep. Humans got it from cows. It can be transmitted by transplantation of organs, and it can be transmitted by not just surgical, but mainly neurosurgical instruments that uh, come into contact with infected uh, human central nervous system tissue. So the diseases in humans that occur, the human TSEs or human sponge form encephalopathies include VCJD, Creutzfeldt-Jacobs disease or CJD, and a disease that was first recognized uh, in the 1950s uh, by a very astute uh, epidemiologist who was doing studies in Papua New Guinea and realized that a, a neurodegenerative disease that he saw in um, the native population was in fact a transmissible disease caused by some sort of transmission of something that was infective from brain tissue. The uh, people had a, uh, a traditional ritual of eating some of their, uh, during a, a death ceremony, burial, they would eat a part of the brain of the small bit of the brain of the of the person who died and in this way this disease had been 
uh, present in the population for quite a while. He uh, understood that, he understood what he saw, and he, he realized that this was uh, caused by something that was transmitted, and, 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 he, underst and he realized what the, the reason, how it was transmitted, and uh, the disease was eradicated very effectively. But uh, nobody took the message home and realized, nobody pursued it enough. And uh, it occurred again, this time through use of uh, infected uh, or infectious uh, material from sheep being fed to cattle, the cattle being fed to humans. Um, the disease has, uh, also, as I've already said, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about it, it occurs in animals, uh, BSE. Now the beef supply is very tightly controlled. Uh, huge, huge amounts of, uh, of um, uh, commerce was disrupted and uh, and people uh, lost, uh, you know, farms and industry was shut down for a long time because different countries would not accept uh, beef from any country that had cases of uh, uh, mad cow disease in their cattle. Um, so BSC has been quite a problem and the end result is that every beef, cat, uh, every beef cow or beef cattle uh, steer is uh, identified and uh, they follow very carefully where that meat goes so that if any case does ever come up they can trace it back to where the point of origin. Uh, as I said there is a disease in sheep that also is a, a spongiform encephalopathy caused by prions. It's called sheep scrapie and uh, strangely enough even though they understood the reason for BSE for a long time they did not prevent uh, sheep uh, slaughterhouse waste from going uh, from being used for f high protein uh, feed production for cattle uh, but they have put an end to that now another quite frightening actually uh, disease uh, uh, that is a spongiform cephalopathy is now spreading throughout North America in the wild uh, deer, moose, and elk population, and it's called chronic wasting disease. So that threatens actually a huge industry, which or a huge, uh, yeah, it's an industry and uh, source of uh, beef, uh, which is uh, derived from hunting of moose, deer, and elk. Uh, this map is from 2020. Uh, September 2020 uploaded the data was uploaded September 2020 and shows uh, areas in gray and uh, black that have wild free-range cases and uh, the circles in yellow are cases of CWD that have cropped up in uh, penned captive uh, populations you know uh, elk and deer are also raised for their uh, uh, for their meat uh, production in captive uh, uh, pens. Uh, the yellow ones have been uh, destroyed. Once they find a case they'll destroy all of the animals there and the uh, red dots uh, are, are current uh, cases that have been identified currently in uh, populations of deer, moose and elk that are, uh, in, are, that are captive. Um, so something to consider. Okay, let's move on. Uh, that's prions. I don't know if I have another slide on. Yes, I do. Well, prions, just to give you a little more information about it, are, um, as I said earlier, proteinaceous infectious particles. They are protein in nature. There is no nucleic acid, no RNA or no DNA. They cause a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, as I said, uh, progressive neurological destruction of tissues in the brain and spinal cord, always fatal. The uh, prion 
protein, in fact, is a abnormal transmissible protein. It's the protein that transmits the disease. It's a pathogenic protein. It's called this for short, PRP SC. SC stands for scrapie. That's the name they used, PRP SC. It turns out that the, and not all of the mechanism is exactly understood, but it, inter, it turns out that if a person is con, gets contaminated with the, this protein, PRP as scrapey PRP, it will induce abnormal folding of a uh, normally present prion protein in neural tissue called PRPC. So PRPC gets converted into PRP SC, scrapey. C is for cell. The normal prion protein is on the cell surface, particularly of the neural cells, and the scrapey protein will accumulate uh, in the brain and form what are called plaques and destruction of brain tissue. Uh, scary disease. Okay. We're going to go quickly through quite a few slides, much of which you don't need to um, uh, learn. It's just for your information, and that's shown in black ink. But in red ink, I've highlighted the organisms that you should be familiar with. These are important pathogenic organisms in humans. So we're going to go through the different virus families, and I'll point out to you what I would expect you to be familiar with. Now. At the top, if you recall, I told you that whether a virus is DNA or RNA or single-stranded or double-stranded or enveloped or non-enveloped, all of those are used in identification. And then, and yes, at the very top, it does show that red ink, but I would not worry about trying to learn which you know family is you know single or double stranded or enveloped or not don't worry about that so this just shows that the this particular family of viruses and they show a characteristic kind of uh, a, a diagram of a characteristic member uh, happens to that family of viruses happen to be single strand DNA non envelope, but you don't, I don't need you to, to learn that. The heading here at the very top of each slide, I don't uh, need you to know that. Uh, it just shows you, and what I, what I would like you to know is single stranded, double stranded, DNA, RNA, circular or linear, uh, and enveloped or non enveloped are all used to identify and classify viruses. Here you see a different kind of virus family, and you see it's not the same characteristics. They're different characteristics. And again, I point out you don't have to learn the characteristics associated with any particular family, but the fact that those characteristics that I just mentioned and I talked about earlier on, uh, in an earlier lecture are used, or maybe this lecture, are used uh, for uh, classification purposes. There is an important uh, member. I, I, I'll talk about individual types of viruses. I already have introduced this one, and I keep getting going. I'll keep going back as we go through the course to the ones that you need to know, and we'll go in more and more detail, more and more facts about them. Papillomaviruses are important pathogenic organisms in humans. They are um, commonly called the human wart virus. There are many different types of human wart viruses. They are important. They're also called human papillomaviruses or H, sorry, H, hmm, HPV, human papillomaviruses. So members of this particular uh, family of viruses are human papillomaviruses and can cause, as I mentioned earlier, uh, cervical cancer and there is a vaccine available against them. The uh, another uh, family of viruses uh, contains two members that uh, are important historically and present day. Uh, the virus that causes smallpox, so the smallpox virus, 
Smallpox was a very serious disease that was found worldwide and was eradicated in the early 1970s due to a very uh, strenuous, efficient, uh, successful vaccination campaign worldwide. Uh, the key fact about smallpox that allowed it uh, to be a good candidate to try to eradicate and successfully was eradicated is that it is it only has one uh, host that it can infect and that host is human are humans so if you prevent all cases in humans you can uh, eradicate the disease we it was successfully eradicated the disease was successfully eradicated there's no reservoir of infections in animal populations that can spread back into humans fact is there is a related uh, virus in cows called the cowpox virus this is quite interesting because it is closely enough related to smallpox that a person who is infected with or vaccinated with this virus will not get smallpox so anyone infected uh, with cowpox who gets a cowpox infection which is not severe in, particularly in humans uh, it gets immune to it and has immunity to smallpox because the two are so closely related and this was understood and realized and so they prepared um, uh, they prepared material and injected it and and this is in fact is the source of the name Vax of the word vaccination it comes from the name of the cowpox virus which is vaccinia virus so vaccinia virus also called cowpox is where the name the word vaccination comes from here we have the herpes virus i was oh no yes i was wrong about the cytomegalovirus varicella virus i said five for i was wrong about varicella virus i said five but it's three Okay. you should know these names human herpes virus 1 and human herpes virus 2 same as well, these are the herpes simplex viruses HSV1 human uh, herpes simplex virus 1 and her herpes simplex virus 2 but the most up-to-date name is HHV1 and HHV2 uh, varicella virus or uh, herpes zoster virus or zoster virus chickenpox virus is um, human herpes virus 3 uh, another important men important member is cytomegalovirus which is human herpes virus 5 and uh, the cause of uh, Kaposi's sarcoma a rare uh, a rare type of um, connective tissue cancer or tumor uh, which uh, uh, which can cause um, uh, which is uh, uh, Kaposi's sarcoma is a fairly rare connective tissue tumor caused by the human herpes virus 8 and uh, is has an important link to to uh, AIDS caused by HIV because there was a there were clusters of cases noticed in the early 80s of uh, people who had Carposi sarcoma there was a sudden uh, there was a sudden rise in the number of cases of Carposi sarcoma which had been previously extremely rare and uh, it was found that they had uh, they were infected with the HIV virus they had AIDS they had immunosuppression and uh, so when they got infected uh, with HHV8 they developed this uh, kind of cancer so we have HHV1 and 2 simplex virus herpes virus HHV3 varicella virus HHV5 cytomegalovirus and the last one which I'm not going to ask you about on the exam but uh, has a tie-in with uh, HIV okay and as I said, many, not all maybe, but many of the herpes uh, virus family members uh, can cause latent infections. And a good example of that would be um, 
uh, herpes simplex virus or HHV1 and 2 and uh, chickenpox virus or HHV3 and I mentioned that earlier just a few slides back okay hepatitis B virus quite important quite serious infects the liver can be fatal can lead to liver cancer uh, enteroviruses and rhinoviruses the, the key a very important enterovirus is uh, polio virus it is called an enterovirus because it is an enteric uh, virus uh, found in the in the um, gastrointestinal tract or spread through the gastrointestinal tract so quite often it is uh, spread in uh, due to uh, fecal oral route of contamination and can be found in sewage uh, very close to being eradicated but there are still some countries where they where it's present and as long as there are cases it uh, is still around and could if people aren't vigilant explode out there are uh, there is a very uh, effective vaccine against polio virus developed in uh, the mid 1950s before which it was a really serious disease a high number of cases uh, everywhere including here in North America and uh, and uh, the virus uh, is spread through the gastrointestinal route but uh, infects and injures um, motor neurons so it will uh, damage uh, people's motor neurons and cause paralysis and uh, if the paralysis is high enough in the body it'll uh, cause death another group uh, of important viruses are the rhinoviruses which cause several quite a few actually uh, a large number of which cause the common cold Another one is norwa norovirus, sometimes called Norwalk virus, which causes quite an acute, severe gastroenteritis. If you uh, have ever, and most people have, had a bout of uh, diarrhea and uh, vomiting all at the same time, very severe, lasting 24 hours, sometimes even 30, 12, say, let's say 18 to 24 hours, sometimes even 36 hours usually caused by norovirus which is uh, causes an acute viral infection and uh, gets quickly resolved but in a child can cause really severe um, severe uh, dehydration uh, and it could even be fatal in a small child okay let's keep Another important group of viruses are uh, these, which are uh, considered as arboviruses. Most, not all, but uh, many are arboviruses, which means that they replicate inside insects and are, in fact, spread to humans by the bite of the insect. That would include all of these here, not including hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is a; it belongs to the same family, but it is a blood born disease that's transferred from uh, human to human by uh, by uh, transfusion of infected uh, blood quite often or transplantation of infected tissues so all of these diseases yellow fever dengue st louis encephalitis and west nile virus are all caused by the this uh, members of this family of viruses The uh, coronaviruses are quite important and quite uh, uh, quite uh, topical, I suppose. Uh, they uh, have led to a series of epidemics uh, starting in the early 2000s and then uh, with SARS, uh, which stands for uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, that disease, SARS, is caused by a coronavirus called SARS-CoV or CoV. Uh, and then later in 2009, 2010, I believe, uh, it first emerged as MERS, which is Middle Eastern 
uh, respiratory syndrome uh, caused by uh, MERS CoV, and I mentioned this uh, these diseases and the viruses in uh, when we talked about emerging diseases in the first lecture or second lecture. I can't. Remember. I think it was the first one. And then uh, more recently, starting to the end of 2019, SARS-CoV-2, which is related to SARS-CoV, but is a different virus, which causes the disease COVID-19. All of these severe viral respiratory diseases, all of them um, acute infections. The particular difficulty, of course, with SARS-CoV-2 is that it causes a uh, disease which uh, in many cases are is uh, asymptomatic and so those asymptomatic individuals can go around and spread the disease uh, without realizing it and uh, as you hopefully understand uh, viral diseases acute viral infections can spread like wildfire and you can get doublings in just a few days of the number of cases uh, out in the population. And uh, a disease that uh, starts in one part of the world, and this, all of these three are good examples of that, disease starting in one part of the world can fairly quickly spread throughout. Um, we'll leave this alone. Uh, these kind of virus, this particular family, notice I'm not mentioning the families, which means I don't need you to know the family name. Um, these are partic cause particularly deadly uh, hemorrhagic uh, disease, uh, very rapidly progressing. Uh, they used to be, in fact, uh, a fatality rate, used to be a fatality rate of up until fairly recently of 95% with Ebola cases. Marburg, Marburg also is a rapidly uh, acute, uh, stunningly pathogenic uh, hemorrhagic uh, uh, causing di disease. Uh, both of them much feared. The thing is that in humans it progresses so quickly that uh, people immediately take precautions stay away or take uh, precautions, uh, distancing precautions or uh, using uh, uh, for treatment. They, they're very, very careful. I mean, they're using uh, uh, biohazard suits to prevent infection of these. There are constantly uh, regularly recurrent outbreaks believed to occur because of transmission from an animal reservoir into the human population. Um, recently, in the past three to four years, a uh, vaccine has been developed for Ebola virus um, and uh, has been used quite successfully. Okay, here's one uh, family I would like you to, to know, uh, orthomyxoviruses, or, or rather, orthomyxoviridae. Uh, that's the family of viruses and the uh, key members of this family are uh, that cause disease in humans are influenza viruses. They have uh, an envelope and the envelope has viral spikes embedded in it and here you see a nice um, diagram showing all of these on the surface across here. I'm highlighting it, are all um, the spikes embedded in the membrane. And you can see, I think quite clearly in this uh, electron micrograph, the individual spikes. That's at the surface on the edge, but facing us. I'm just going to outline, I'm just going to outline uh, individual spike proteins, as you can see. They're about that size. Let's change color. They're about that size all over the surface. These are viral proteins embedded in the membrane that came from the original host cell that the virus uh, budded out of. There are three types, uh, type A, type B, and type C. The 
most virulent is type A for humans. It also infects animals, uh, birds and uh, pig populations can be infected and that's an important part of the problem. Can, those animals can be infected with the influenza type A. Um, it is the cause of most uh, type A influenza viruses are the cause of most flu pandemics that are that occur yearly. Uh, sorry, epidemics that occur can occur yearly in the world. Uh, pandemics are, do not occur as often. The spike proteins uh, are uh, proteins coded for by the virus and are uh, H and N. Those are the that's the main name for the uh, for the virus proteins. H standing for hemagglutinin and N. Hem uh, H standing for hemagglutinin and N standing for neuraminidase. So these are uh, the proteins that are found on the surface envelope and these are involved in um, attachment and uh, progression of the disease infection into a, a cell. And these are the, and the genes coding for these are uh, actually highly mutable they undergo mutation quite frequently. And so you get different subtypes of the virus, like uh, H, and they number them, like H1N1 or H5N3, H1N5, you know, H5N5. I think H5N1 is quite dreaded. H5N1, H1N, there are many. I'm just trying to give you an idea of just how many. And uh, every year, the ones that uh, populate, uh, get into the human population uh, change. And so uh, the vaccine has to uh, change and therefore flu vaccines have to be given every year, a new different type of flu vaccine. There are also uh, type B and type C. Type C are not uh, the cause of any severe uh, epidemics or pandemics. Type B can be the cause of epidemics. Uh, and in fact, uh, the vaccine that's given each year for flu usually contains at least two different uh, type A influenza virus uh, killed, uh, pro not killed, but protein from influenza. No, it is uh, killed or weakened influenza virus type A and uh, two types and one type B. It is the cause of a lot of uh, respiratory disease and death in the world each year, particularly in uh, older populations, but also in uh, younger ones. And uh, vaccination is highly recommended. Okay, I think there aren't too many others. Oh, here, retroviruses. I've spoken a little bit about those. They, of course, contain the enzyme retro uh, reverse transcriptase, which allows uh, synthesis uh, of DNA uh, from a RNA genome. Okay, it'd be, it would be better to have put in RNA here. So I'll do that now. Um, from a viral RNA genome. Retroviruses are RNA containing viruses. Their genome is RNA. And so in order to produce DNA, they first have to uh, change the RNA, make a DNA molecule from the RNA. So they uh, have this uh, reverse transcriptase. It's quite an important uh, enzyme, reverse transcriptase. What else do we have? One slide more and that's it so we'll leave it at that so that's the end of uh, uh, micro lecture 7 part 3 and the end of and that's the last slide in lecture 7